We want to see the young people, even themselves already, we can see the commitment from them that the development of Africa will not wait for anyone else but them. This means, this means more ownership than ever before. And this is the right time for them to act, especially when our leadership from the African Union, recently in Kigali, they signed the Continental Free Trade Area. And the reason of the topic, even the theme of discussion, is to see how the young people take advantage of the, the continental free trade area, all this regulation that they are putting in place, all these laws that are enabling uh, countries from, to increase more intra-trade within African countries, to make it easy to trade and cross border and do business with each other. And looking beyond the, the boundaries that were created during colonial time that would be remaining, that could remain as a geographical uh, boundaries, but you want really something that is going to be seamless and smooth transaction between the young people in one country in another country. Mm -hmm. So the discussion mostly is about how do we tap into opportunities that we have as a continent by the young people. So present in the discussion, we also have policymakers who are the ministers. We have almost uh, nine ministers from different countries of Africa. And we are having also a steering committee uh, that is going to be discussing. We've had, we've listened to the young people. What is our role in this? What are we supposed to do? And this is a partnership. Mm. And that is where I want to jump in. Of course, you've spoken about uh, the political boundaries uh, that came in with the colonial times. But today, we're not really limited by these boundaries, but mm -hmm. maybe limited by the minds and how we can actually create a conversation around that. Because you're looking at an era where technology has taken much of uh, you know today's happenings. If you're talking about markets, if you're talking about uh, business, e-commerce has mm -hmm. grown so fast but not only for Africa as a continent, but for the whole world. Now let's talk about youth in, in Rwanda in specific. What are some of the projects that the Ministry of Youth has actually in place to support these young entrepreneurs that are actually opening up doors for Rwanda to do business with the world? Uh, that's a good question, especially to focus. What are we prioritizing? We have strategic sectors that we have prioritized, but we first have to deal with the mindset of the young people. Sure. Uh, the mindset of I can do, the mindset that I don't have to wait for someone else to do it for me, the mindset that says with my skill, with my knowledge, I can start small and grow big, but with my own understanding that I have a big vision, but I start gradually, I grow with the vision. So the sectors we're looking at, uh, Rwanda is moving from agrarian to ICT, uh, knowledge-based economy, but we still have a, a big number of uh, population which is still in, uh, relying on agriculture as a source of employment. So we are looking at young people uh, also in being involved into agribusiness in agriculture, the whole value chain of agriculture. This has a lot. We have young people in agribusiness and there are almost now 4,000 graduates that are completed in the whole value chain, mm -hmm. right from internship in agriculture sector production then we have those ones into agro-processing and production. We're also having those in transportation. They're also having those that are using ICT, information communication, to connect them to the market. So it's a whole bunch, uh, the whole group is in two different value chains but linked to each other. And they have formed themselves into Rwanda Young uh, Agribusiness Forum, like Rwandan Youth ag in Agribusiness, and they have created a forum for themselves to support each other, mentor each other, but also go as one group to negotiate for loans, to negotiate for markets, like one group all together. So one of the areas that we are focusing on is agribusiness, which is a backbone of our country. We also have young people in uh, ICT, uh, innovators. We have also created labs uh, like K-Lab and others that are acting as an incubation uh, where they can, we can nurture what they can do best in that ICT sector where we could also supporting them in terms of uh, creating jobs out of the ICT sector. As you said, it has opened up windows and doors that have been locked before. Mm -hmm. ICT is an enabler for all sectors to, thri to thrive. Uh, we have also, we are looking at as well tourism. We have a MICE strategy, uh, a strategy that attracts investment into, uh, into the country, but most in tourism and hospitality sector. And as a strategy for our country, we are looking at how do young people benefit from this. A number of hotels are growing up. A number of uh, meetings, conference halls, uh, conference tourism is also growing up in Rwanda. 
We have also natural, natural beauties that we're already exporting or showcasing as things that the tourists could visit and see. Mm -hmm. These are areas that young people are also tapping into and creating their own jobs. Mm -hmm. We have one young man, it's a network of them, but one example that I can show, uh, just one mind what they can do. Mm -hmm. There's a young man in the northern, in the no northern part of Rwanda, Kinegi location where there is uh, the, the mountain gorillas, the yeah. famous uh, silverbacks. This young man started a company that could showcase the beauty of Rwanda mm -hmm. in our culture. And uh, he also provides services for the tourists who are climbing the mountain up to give them the, the, the sleeping bags, to, to cook for them, to carry these uh, luggages that they're carrying uh, while uh, trekking on the, on the mountains. And sometimes they spend a night over there. They just uh, take a site there and put their camp and put everything together. It becomes a home immediately. Mm -hmm. So taking care of those basics. And this young man uh, also takes tourists in the, lo in the rural areas to show them how we grind, how we dance in a local traditional way, how we cook, how we, you know, preservation of food. And this has created 200 jobs for young people, just one, jobs. yes. Let's look at it from uh, that perspective, of course, of uh, small and medium enterprises. We do know that Alan analysts back and forth uh, repeatedly talk about that uh, pat particular conversation, saying that these employ up to 70% of the Africans in the formal sector, the SMEs. But these are also the same companies that fight so hard with regulations because they're not in their favor. And of course, the conversation on uh, access to finance. As a government, as the Minister of Youth, uh, kindly just help me understand, with of course the growing uh, number of startups every day and uh, SMEs in the country, what are the priorities right now to ensure growth for these small and medium enterprises? Uh, that calls in why we have Youth Connect. Okay. Uh, Youth Connect is kind of a platform that links young people, small and medium, micro, small and medium, mm -hmm. uh, farms that, that we would call micro and SMEs. MSMEs. Yes, MSMEs, mm -hmm. that you would, uh, they're the ones actually even the ones that are generating more than 85% of jobs. The large farms create 0.5% of jobs. So, so the majority of the jobs that we get is from micro MSMEs generally. And what we would say, why the Youth Connect was set up six years ago and was launched by our president, uh, Paul Kagame, in 2012, it is a platform that connects, it's kind of a homegrown solution, trying to solve the challenge that the young people meet every day. Mm -hmm. One of them is what you said about access to finance. Access to finance. Secondly, really access to markets. Mm -hmm. The third is access to skills. The fourth is access to information and mentorship. You know, this network, mentorship, how did you make it? Can I do it the same way you did it? Or I can leapfrog. I don't need to go through the channel, the challenges you made, because you, you had your laboratory, you managed to do it, and you, I'm learning from you. This kind of networks help young people. As leaders, we cannot go and speak to the young people that you create jobs and uh, you, when you have not done it yourself. Mm -hmm. So you always want to go with someone, a role model, so a success story at their age, what they managed to do. So Youth Connect is kind of a platform that links the, the gaps, that creates the bridge between the gaps. The young people here and access to information that was lacking, access to finance that was an issue, access to the, all the opportunities that we're talking about. Right. And it, so far since its inception, we have managed to discuss with young people, like engaging them, the dialogue, depending on the topic that we want to discuss. Uh, uh, we have managed to get uh, almost 4 million young Rwandans to be engaged. Uh, in, in access to finance, we have supported almost 540. Uh, and these have created 6,000 jobs so far.